So as I'm setting up my microphone, um, this, is, this is an interesting presentation. It's an interesting presentation for a couple of reasons. So first, everybody in this room knows what Pixar is, has an opinion. The second part is there are lots of companies already invested into it in one way or the other, right? Either you have decided for a particular build for it, maybe you're actually manufacturing hardware and so you have products and there are other companies who also have products. And so I want to thread on that really lightly. But what's really needed is we saw a lot of fragmentation over the past couple of years. We saw fragmentation going from Pixar 2 or Pixar 1, actually, um, which was pretty consistent. You could buy a couple different units, you got consistent results, to something where we start to have a fragmented ecosystem. And it's at a level where it's becoming tedious, unsafe, and expensive. And so... As the creator of Pixar, I'm re-engaging with that problem. I'm engaging it the usual way with a community process. And so the goal is to bring the industry together and also create a design that's collecting feedback from the whole industry, which was always the way, right? That it, it always was uh, use case and user driven. And for that, we're also going to standardize a couple of buses and connectors that includes the, the connectors that are around, that includes the autopilot bus and a new payload bus. And it's all very early days. So I'm not going to present something that's done and finished and set in stone. It's, it's a continuum. At the same time, we've prototyped to make sure this is all buildable. Community process. Um, we've actually closed the vote. I just see that now. So if you, click, if you go on that Doodle link, you will see that there's a Pixar dev call every Tuesday evening in European time zone, morning PST. We will try to establish a second one for the Asian time zones because we want to be inclusive. And that vote is, I think, still ongoing, will be closed soon. Goal is to have two releases per year for the flight management unit revisions. That's a design name of Pixhawk always has been. And there's going to be a TikTok design process. So there's the FMU, without anything, revision, which represents the latest technology. And that's what you typically use as a developer, as a hobbyist. It's the latest and greatest. It's not necessarily hardened or proven in a very significant way. It's just a new cool thing. And then there is the FMU VX version, which is the same CPU architecture, similar sensors, maybe not the same because we've learned something, and hardened. It has a hardened power supply. It has all the things you need for authentication. It has isolated power domains for the sensors. So you have three complete isolated sensor domains. And that is intended for the industry. So if you build a product, you generally want to target FMU VX, but for your internal R&D team, you want to target the latest FMU version. Then we will set more clear compatibility requirements because so far they were implicit, but really with a lot of fracturing. Uh, we want people to be binary compatible for the autopilot software because it's really adding a lot of load onto the dev team to support different boards. And while we can support different boards, we cannot support safety or certification testing for N boards. It's not possible. No matter if you can do it in software, but you cannot put the safety and certification evidence behind it. And so we need that standard to be a lot more tight for the applications where you care about it. So... The next thing is uh, the Pixar connector standard. We already kind of have that, so people are not diligent enough yet, but it's in, in not a too terrible shape. Then a new thing is the Pixar autopilot bus. I will talk about that in a second. And the Pixar payload bus. Both are not done. Both are in flux, and now is the time to engage with it. And for previous generations of hardware, we don't have hardware for this yet. Uh, I've 
reference the repo where this is all there. Governance. Uh, this will work similar to the open source projects with dev call, maintainer, development, community, and industry stakeholders, so make sure you engage on that. There is a royalty-free license for the Pixhawk trademark if you're sticking to it. And then the conditions are pretty much like USB, right? I think the microphone is good. Okay. The goal is not to, uh, you know, be discriminative, but instead to create a standard. So what it what we'll have is um, making sure that you're using the right, using it the right way, that you're sticking to the connector standards, that you're sticking to the autopilot bus standards, and we probably will also need to talk about manufacturing standards. And there, I'm again looking for feedback because right now we have manufacturers that do per board testing. Some do no, no testing. Some do temperature compensation. And I think we will need to come up as an industry with customer expectations from, well, if you buy something that's fulfilling the standard, what has it actually been tested for? And this is true for any hardware standard, right? If you buy a USB device, if you buy anything else, it has gone through a certain minimum set of requirements. And then you can still add your quality on top uh, as a manufacturer. What I don't have on the slide deck, which is the sort of natural question coming up here, is like, okay, great. Now, I have actually fulfilled all this. How do I differentiate as a manufacturer? And I think there are tons of ways to differentiate in terms of form factor, in terms of temperature range in terms of additional unit qualification and testing you're providing, in terms of the carrier boards you're providing, in terms of design and support services you're pro providing to drone manufacturers. So there's a whole variety of business models. But again, differentiation for me is not getting something to the point that it's safe. That's just not acceptable and will hold this whole industry down. And that's why we're now engaging on the core project side on this. Pixar connector standard, that is something you all know. Those are the JST-GH connectors. But it's also important that the pinout is correct, so that you're not plugging into an autopilot and now suddenly everything is reversed. Um, happens. We need to prevent that. Then Pixar autopilot bus, that is a new cool thing. So that's a 100-pin connector. The pinout is right now not locked down. We have a draft up. And you also see something that looks like hardware, and that is indeed a full design. Because as I was trying to come up with something I can present, I thought, like, well, I cannot really do a design without proving it. I cannot create a standard without arguing that it's implementable. So what we've done at Autarian is built a complete board design that we're not intending to offer as a product, but that is representing the reference design for Pixar. So we have now, again, something showing how it's done, driven from software requirements, driven from the real application requirements. And we will work with the manufacturing ecosystem so they can build their own version on it. What is standardized is the connector and the mounting holes. And so you, you get interoperability. Then Pixar payload bus, similar concept. It's in an earlier stage. I have no draft right now. The goal is to create an interface that supports most payloads and applications. So something that is specific enough that you can actually build it to a mechanical port. And clip it on or twist it on or whatever it will be. It should be a tool-less mounting and then have a defined connector and a defined software interface, which is almost more important, how you can talk to whatever is on there. And I think that's very doable. And we have, for example, interest from companies like Unique who want to participate there, uh, lead the way, lead by example. But I also think that it's really important to have this because in an ecosystem like ours, where you have smaller companies working together, not having that kills everybody.
because you have integration costs again and again and again, and the industry is getting to a point where individual companies cannot afford another gimbal integration, another payload integration. It's, it's just delaying everything. Go ahead. So, Glenn from Unique Research just uh, invited anybody to talk to him about, about this, about the standardization process. We, we didn't even put the whole working group together yet, so this is the right moment to engage and participate. Now, let's quickly talk about... Yes, sorry, go ahead. No, no, it's meant to be sort of, we're essentially the whole thing weaving through what I'm trying to get through on this Dev Summit is PX4 is the thing that makes a drone fly. And so we're taking everything one level up. And so that connector will also cover actually the onboard computer, have a connection to it, Ethernet, USB, maybe both. So that and an API that's linking to the to Mav SDK, so that you're ending up with a whole system that allows you to get a programmable payload. Go ahead. Is there overlap between those two buses, the overpilot one, and the, or they're completely separate? So the question was if the autopilot bus and the payload bus are overlapping. So certainly signals from the autopilot bus go down to the payload so that in cases like typical example is a GPS trigger signal or capture signal for RTK time sync. That goes from the payload bus all the way to the autopilot bus to the autopilot. But conceptually they're separate. And this is what I just mentioned. The motivation to do all this is we need seamless communication between the flight controller and the computer, we need that on many different levels. And to enable that, we need to move to Ethernet. And creating a standard connector is a great opportunity to put Ethernet as a standard feature in. All the microcontrollers that are currently being used for flight controls already support it. We've worked out that the pinout works, and so life will hopefully become a lot easier because now you suddenly don't have that weird bottleneck anymore between your flight controller and your computer. So the question is, will we support the uh, switches? Yes, so the idea is that we will recommend standard uh, 100 megabit, probably gigabit switching equipment, maybe even circumventing FIs to have a really s small, simple network to topology where you have, I can think of at least four devices, flight controller, mission computer, the payload, the camera, and the radio. A lot of uh, IP radios are Ethernet interface. So we already are up to four devices. So I think going forward, we will have a, at least five port, maybe eight port switch. And I think the jury is still out on whether that's automotive to wire Ethernet, whether it's uh, consumer normal eight wire or maybe the reduced four wire pinout. So that is something we're figuring out. My personal prediction is a mix of four and eight wire will serve us in the short term best. But again, this is the start of this discussion. Then preview for the full design. So we're going to enable a complete reference design that has IMU board, autopilot board, flight controller base board, and helping the fragmentation that exists right now in the market that way. If you want the full architecture, like this is the crazy block diagram where everything is out, just to show it's, it's a mature design phase and now we can have discussions, make the changes and execute. And it will include also 
the mechanical solution to deal with vibration. I've also shown that high level, so that's, that's a draft of the autopilot module. It's going to be about uh, 28, 28 by 34 millimeters. It's not a final design, but to give you an idea of the size. Baseboard. And then something that I think also needs to be part of it, we need better computer vision developing development platforms that can also be used to reproduce results from whatever, the US, Australia, China, Switzerland, and you can load a complete software load and you can verify the result and you can actually collaborate. Right now it's like, in computer vision, it's like everybody has their own Pixar design and is trying to argue about the sensor filtering pipeline. That doesn't work. And so we need one or two or three canonical reference vehicles that are exactly the same and that allow this global community to collaborate on computer vision. And also, I find generally computer vision people are not particularly good with hardware. So I think it will actually help us a lot to engage with more vision developers by making it less do-it-yourself soldering and more about software. Yeah, you've seen that already, and I think we're just in time. Any questions right now on this so far? So, I have a question about the last slide, about the reference design. Uh, you're mentioning the, yeah, you're mentioning an up core here specifically, but uh, what about other hardware options like the Qualcomm that's been around for some time, is it not an option? Like, what is the view on that? So I think I'm open to anything, and I think it would be healthy if we had an Intel, an ARM, and an NVIDIA option. So I'm not discriminative. What I find, though, is that the Intel platforms have the best memory bandwidth, and the most people buy into the full processing potential of NVIDIA, but then actually don't go ahead and leverage it. I'd love to change that, and maybe as a community we can, but I think we have to be honest to ourselves which platforms actually do work. Anyone else? All the way to the top. So we've, we've done a failure mode and an effect analysis that I don't think we ever got polished and published, but I think we, we'd be happy to. And that has driven some of the considerations here to essentially say, well, if you argue that you have, for example, sensors that can do voting between each other and they're all on the same power rail, it's kind of obvious that it's not a great idea to have a single point of failure there. Yeah. Yes, I mean, that's the whole idea that everybody now comes in and it's like, okay, here's an example, and now we can have an informed discussion and challenge all the design questions. I was concerned that if I pre present like, hey, yeah, we should standardize this here, then there is no concrete way forward. So I think we have that now, and yes, it's, it's important we get all that scrutiny on the whole design. No, we're certainly not going to... The question was, what about the standard uh, Ethernet connector? So, no, I think that's too big and, and does not work. We've successfully experimented with four-wire buses with JSTGH, 100 megabit, uh, which is in the Ethernet spec for unshielded use. 
but I'm open to other suggestions. There is an embedded rugged smaller connector from high rows, but those are exactly the kinds of discussions I'd like to have. We have a way forward, but there might be better ones. Yeah. The so question was about noise and Ethernet. Yeah, so noise on Ethernet and noise on USB 2 and USB 3 is a problem. And that's why I think we almost need a custom design for drones. And it's not bearable for the industry, to, for every company to learn that. Um, and it's, it's also not good for the reputation of the industry and or PX4 because... People slap this together, and it doesn't fly well, and it's like, oh, the flight controller failed. And so, yeah, it's, I think it will end up being a very particular build of how we exactly do it so that we don't have the interference that usually comes with high frequency switching. So the, the, the question was, like, how do you actually load software onto this? And I think that will be initially still very involved and hands-on, like in the early days of flight control, but at least you now have standard hardware. I do believe, and, and like full disclosure, that is like how Alterian has been built. I do believe that in the end of the day, you need a software distribution for these vehicles, the same way as you need a Linux distribution. And that is a problem that, that needs to be solved. Right, that, that was the last question. Sorry, we have to move on with the uh, summit. Uh, please find Dr. Mayer after the next session in the coffee break um, before NXP set us up or while, while they set up. I would like to ask the audience, is there anyone interested here in participating in a working group of payload uh, that Lawrence men mentioned? One, two, three, four. Okay, can you look for me after this session so we can write your number and we can get something organized? Thank you. So next up we have, uh, thank you Lawrence.